People have kind of been freaking out that strength and hypertrophy have different dose response curves from our research. But here's the full story of why that's actually what we'd expect, not some shocking contradiction. First, I'll note that this debate isn't new at all. Researchers have been discussing the relationship between muscle size and strength for years. Consider this point counterpoint series of articles from 2019 in the Journal of Sports Medicine, in which two groups of researchers went back and forth on whether changes in muscle size contribute to strength gains. Here's what both sides actually agreed on, even back then. Hypertrophy isn't necessary for strength gains, and hypertrophy isn't sufficient for strength gains. In other words, you can get stronger without getting bigger, and you can get bigger without getting proportionally stronger. The key word for this discussion is contributory. Muscle growth likely contributes to strength gains. It's one factor among many. Strength is multifactorial. Neural adaptations, skill acquisition, technical refinement, fatigue management, all of these play a role alongside hypertrophy. So it's not surprising that the curves are a bit different. In fact, I think most researchers would have been surprised if they were the same. Further, here's what people are missing about our meta-analysis. It wasn't even designed to compare hypertrophy and strength directly. I won't go down the rabbit hole of randomization, causal inference, etc. but consider this. The hypertrophy curve and the strength curve come from different data sets. Only about half of the strength studies also measured hypertrophy. Comparing the curves is like comparing apples to oranges. And when you look at the actual study characteristics from the strength data set, you get very important context. The strength studies average Average just 10 and a half weeks. They trained in moderate rep ranges and mostly used strength assessments that were novel to the participants. All of these study characteristics likely resulted in those other factors contributing to strength that we mentioned playing a pretty large role and probably a bigger role than they would play for someone deep into a training career. So yes, our research indicates that the diminishing returns of additional volume are stronger for strength than they are for hypertrophy. But a critical evaluation of what's underlying these curves lands us at a much more level-headed conclusion. And for what it's worth, I don't view the curves as fundamentally different anyway. At the end of the day, both hypertrophy and strength have positive dose-response relationships, they have diminishing returns, and neither of them have a clear inverted U. The bottom line is that different curves don't mean contradiction. They mean strength is more complex than just muscle growth. And the context of the included studies is vital to keep in mind. And be sure to follow along for more training insights without the hype.